Halo. A pioneer of the FPS gaming genre and a pioneer of gaming in general, known for its amazing stories, memorable characters, and absolute specimen lines of dialogue. Ma'am, Ma squad leaders are requesting a rally point. Where should they go? To war. But out of the eight mainline games we received over 20 plus years, one game in particular has stuck out to me throughout this whole time, and that would be Halo 3. So, let's get into... I've been a long time fan of the Halo franchise. Halo Comedy Vault was the first video game I actually ever played. Halo 2 always had the best story, and Halo 3 holds a very close place in my heart, and the hearts of many other Halo fans. But before we talk about Halo 3, we have to talk about how Halo 3 was made. So essentially when Halo 2 was released, everyone loved it. It made news, headlines, and everyone loved the game. So Microsoft immediately had Bungie start development on Halo 3. But there was one glaring issue. Bungie and Microsoft had made a deal where Bungie would only make games for Microsoft from 2000 to 2007. And Bungie was required to make five Halo games. They had already made Halo Combat Evolved in 2001 and Halo 2 in 2004, and the release of Halo 3 was set to release in 2007. So Bungie had to work double time to complete development for Halo 3, which would release on September 25th, 2007, Halo ODST, which would release on September 22nd, 2009, and Halo Reach, which was set to release on September 14th, 2010. So Bungie had to develop all of these games before their deal with Microsoft ended. And so that's what they did. They completed development and Microsoft pressed the launch button for Halo 3. It was magnificent. The multiplayer was phenomenal, customization was more accessible and easier than ever, the Spartan armor looked amazing, graphics were improved from Halo 2, and the gunplay in the multiplayer was phenomenal. All the beloved game modes were there, and people had a blast. The multiplayer chat rooms were higher quality than ever before. <laughs> and overall, the multiplayer was a smashing success. Now, on to the campaign. The campaign was regarded as one of, if not the best in Halo's history, right there with Halo 2, and to this day is still regarded as a cult classic and is very highly praised even being considered as one of the best video game campaigns in history. But now let's go into... First off, something that always catches my attention in this game are the biomes. The biomes are so diverse and are extremely memorable and distinguishable from other games. We have this desert biome, which is extremely distinguishable from any other type of desert. We have this snowy biome. We have the flood infected biome. Halo just looks so vastly different from any other game, it's insane. But now we have to talk about the gameplay. In Halo 3, gameplay is pretty standard. However, comparing it to today's gameplay types, Halo 3 looks and feels completely different. First off, there is no sprinting in Halo 3, which it feels like nowadays if a game doesn't have sprinting, then it must have weak gameplay, right? Wrong. The base gameplay with combat and enemy types does not require you to move fast. Halo 3 requires you to be smart and calculated with your decisions in combat. As in Halo, if you make a wrong decision, you may run into a large group of grunts or drones and get mowed down. Even though these two enemy types are relatively weak, if they are clustered, then they can pack a punch. But then there's also counters to these foes. Like if there's a large group of grunts, then you can just use a rocket launcher. But then you run into the risk of using the ammo on a situation that may not call for it. Or you may need to use that ammo in a little bit for a tougher situation. And rocket launchers don't spawn too terribly often to give you ammo. So you have to think about how you're going to use it. You see what I'm saying? Halo 3 is not afraid to make the player have to think for themselves. In fact, Halo 3 encourages that by wanting you to try out every gun possible and find out what works with your playstyle. Or, if you're in a certain situation, Halo 3 wants you to also be flexible though, and be skilled enough to use that suggested weapon accordingly, and be able to save ammo and not be wasteful as you may not find that particular ammo for that gun in a while. 
Another amazing thing about Halo 3 is the gun variety. You got SMGs, you got ARs, you got RPGs, you got snipers, you got pistols, and you have shotguns, and you even have melee weapons, and even laser weapons and flamethrowers. But you don't just have guns, you also have grenades to add to your arsenal, and also augments, like gravity lifts, a shield bubble, or a healing emitter. And that's not it either. You also have marines that you can trade weapons with to make them overpowered and just to make the game more fun and interesting. And then there are also vehicles like mongooses, warthogs, scorpions, and more. But then you also have enemy vehicles like ghosts, banshees, and wraiths, and a lot more. And these various vehicles add a deeper level of gameplay to the game, making it more interesting. And you can also ride in the alien vehicles. And these vehicles can also have weapons. And you can even have other marines drive in them with you and help assist you in combat. And can overall make the gameplay more immersive and fun. But then, there are the different enemy types. I already mentioned the grunts and the drones. These two are essentially cannon fodder for the aliens, which I will talk about in a moment. But these aren't the only aliens we fight. We also fight against aliens called the Jackals, that essentially have crazy accuracy, but at the cost of being easy to kill. But to combat some of that, the Jackals will also have an energy shield. Next are the Brutes. These are the basic soldiers and the heavy hitters. However, they do have a glaring weakness, their armor. Essentially, what you want to do is hit them in the head or knock off each piece of their armor to weaken them significantly. And finally, we have the Hunters. These behemoths will not die if you shoot them in the front. But if you shoot them in the back, or use grenades or rocket launchers, then that's the easiest way to kill them. But that's not all for the enemies, because then you have a different faction of enemies called the Flood. This alien parasite takes different forms by infecting different species of beings, living or dead. Not every Flood form shares the same weaknesses, but the Flood's main weaknesses are melee attacks, explosives, and fire. Finally, we have an oddball. We have the Sentinels, which are sometimes enemies, but they're sometimes not. It's weird. But essentially, they can fly and shoot laser beams, but their weak point is their glowing eye or orb or whatever you want to call it. If you hit that, then they go down. And that's essentially it for the enemies. But now that we've covered the masterful gameplay of Halo, I think it's time we talk about the... Spoilers ahead for the base campaign of Halo 3, obviously, and the beginning of that campaign. But in Halo 3, you play as Spartan John 117, aka the Master Chief. Where in the beginning of the game, you fall from in space and come out of an escape pod. And you are woken up by the beloved Sergeant Johnson, and you find yourself in the forest with a group of marines, but amongst this small group, you see the Arbiter, an elite that was once a part of the Covenant faction, but who left once he figured out that everything he knew was a lie. But not just the Arbiter left, every other elite left the Covenant. And if you don't know, the Covenant is essentially a faction of aliens who travel across the galaxy to activate something called the Halo Rings, to go onto the thing that the Covenant call the Great Journey. But turns out that these rings don't grant a Great Journey, Rather, they grant the universe a great death. Not actually, but essentially it wipes out all living beings, and resets the galaxy, and puts all species back to their primitive states. So, the UNSC, the military that Master Chief serves, and the Arbiter, and the other outcast elites, team up to try to defeat the Covenant and end the Prophet of Truth, the orchestrator and leader of the Covenant. But then, another enemy faction joins the fight that is against both you and the Covenant which are the Flood, that are actively trying to take over the galaxy and infect everything and everyone. But Master Chief is also trying to simultaneously save his AI assistant Cortana, who Master Chief is now quite attached to, and he needs to save her because in Halo 2, she was taken by the Flood. But that's all I'm going to say as I don't want to spoil the story completely, and also because you guys just need to play this game, and I'll tell you why by talking about Halo 3 has some of the most entertaining characters of all time, while having the amazing duo of Master Chief and the Arbiter, 
And while we didn't spend much time with Cortana in this game, the time we did spend with her was fantastically written and executed. The Marines felt more alive than ever, the Master Chief felt more fleshed out, and the Arbiter's character wasn't quite as strong as he was in this game compared to Halo 2, but that's to be expected as Halo 2 was mainly focused on the Arbiter, and Halo 3 is mostly focused on the Master Chief. As the Arbiter pretty much gets his resolution at the end of this game, but the story is very solid, the gameplay is masterfully crafted, and all the characters are very likable. The gunplay and combat was improved by a lot, and the grunts and enemies felt more alive than ever. Just listen to these voice lines. He was my best friend! I should have been in a leadership class! And the map and the environment design is phenomenal. And I feel like it has to be said, but the enemy AI in this game was way ahead of its time. The enemies were highly responsive to your movements and combat decisions, and they made decisions based on how your gameplay style was. It was incredible. One of the only real weaknesses in this game was the dialogue. Some lines were just not it, and some lines were absolutely amazing and incredibly quotable. Come on now. We've got enough to worry about without you two trying to kill each other. Were it so easy. But overall, this is an absolutely amazing game, and honestly, this is one of, if not my favorite game of all time, and I highly recommend that you guys play this game, if you haven't already, as well as the other previous Halo games, as they are absolutely amazing and there is absolutely nothing else like them. But that was my summary of why Halo 3 was so amazing. But what do you think about Halo 3? Let me know down in the comments below. But anyways, let's get into... As always, we have traditions here. So essentially at the end of any of my long form videos, I'll shout out a creator who I think is criminally underrated and who I feel deserves way more recognition and attention. And today's creator is the man himself, Demonic. He's an absolute beast at Fortnite and has absolutely amazing clips that he shows via shorts. So if you want to see absolutely goaded clips by an absolutely goaded content creator, then check out Demonic right now. And make sure to join the official Pojo Discord for all things gaming related and more. And all of these links will be in the description of this video down below. But anyways, thank you all so much for watching, and as always, have a lovely night.